From Sarasota Memorial and the Deb Kavanaugh Multimedia Studio, this is HealthCast, a healthy dose of information from experts you can trust. Hi, everybody. Welcome to HealthCast. I'm Allison Goddermeyer. Thank you so much for joining us today as we talk about creating and living with healthy New Year's resolutions. Our guest today is Blanton Rowan, a certified personal trainer at HealthFit, the medically integrated facility here in Sarasota, operated by Sarasota Memorial. Blanton, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. New Year's resolutions. Are they a good thing or a bad thing? I think it depends on the person. I personally love New Year's resolutions. I think they can be very fun, but I also think they could be detrimental. I think they can be, people can get too excited. I actually had a client yesterday say to me, I think New Year's resolutions were created by gyms to get memberships. And I really, that made me laugh because it made me think about how people get very wound up at New Year's about the next year and what they're gonna do. So I do think that they can have a negative side. Um, I think they can be fun, especially if it's goal setting. Um, so I think there's a good and a bad side to New Year's resolutions. Um, it just depends on your personality and what kind of goals you're setting. Well, we hear that one of the most common New Year's resolutions is, of course, to join the gym, to get fit, whatever that is. What's maybe one or two of the most common reasons people don't achieve those resolutions? Maybe they come to you, say, this is part of my New Year's resolution, and then you see them fall off. So I've been a trainer for 18 years and we call all of the new members that come into the gym, the resolutionistas <laughs> and um, because of this trend. And it's unfortunate, but it does happen. We're all human. And I think we get excited about our new goals and our resolutions. And unfortunately, many times, and this is where the bad part of New Year's resolutions come in, we set things that are unattainable and they don't really serve us or there's obstacles in our way that we're not planning for. So I encourage people that are setting New Year's resolutions or any resolutions to say, could I start this tomorrow? Could I go to the gym tomorrow? Do I have time to go to the gym the three, the five times I wanna go this week? Do I have time to go on a diet? Do I want to go on a diet? Because I think when you ask yourself that question after Christmas, after Hanukkah, after all the holidays, and you said on January 1st, I'm gonna start X, Y, and Z. If you ask yourself, I'm actually gonna start this tomorrow, and the answer is, I can't do that. Why can't you do that? What are the reasons? Maybe it's logistics, maybe it's completely understandable, but maybe there's some reasons why you couldn't do it the next day that will actually apply to why you're not gonna be successful in January, in February. So take that deep dive, like really answer that question to yourself. These are, this is my resolution. I'm gonna to go to the gym five times a week. I can't start tomorrow because, and look at those reasons, because they're going to apply. There's gonna be holidays. There's going to be death. There's going to be a school play. There's gonna be days where you're just like, I don't wanna to go to the gym. You know, there's gonna be all these reasons that get into our, into our lives and keep us from meeting the goals we've set for ourselves. So I tell people, really look at your resolution. Look at why you want to meet that goal and then start planning. Make a plan and make it attainable. Maybe if you haven't been to the gym in two years, you say, I'm gonna go to the gym twice this week. So I'm gonna go sign up. I'm, I'm gonna look at classes, start with attainable goals, start checking them off. I've been to the gym twice for two months. I'm gonna go three times. Maybe you've been five times and you're like, goal met. Maybe you haven't gone at all. Why aren't you going? Really analyze what that resolution is, how it serves you and how you can make it sustainable. So maybe in another sense, I haven't worked out in a while. I shouldn't say that my New Year's resolution is to run an Ironman <laughs> competition. Exactly. I should say I want to get back to working out. I want to get back to working out. I want to run an Ironman. Maybe I should just start walking on the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Yes. Um, and for those who maybe already do work out but want to take it to the next level, how do you help maybe some of your clients um, find their New Year's resolutions that are those attainable goals? So that's actually a really interesting question because people that want to take it to that next level or maybe they've met many of their goals and there's one that's just kind of sitting over here on the side that they're just not addressing. So I, if they come to me and they want to make it an open dialogue and a conversation, I literally ask them, what are the obstacles? You made this your resolution last year and it hasn't happened. Why? 
does it serve you? Is that maybe the reason why it hasn't happened? Or is there some other reason? So maybe we need to modify it so that you actually have success um, for, to meet that goal. And I think that that is um, a great conversation to have with a, you know, a client and a trainer. And um, you know, go home and think about it. Like, I made this goal a year ago. Why did, haven't I met it? Like, why did it just get washed away? So absolutely. If people are listening to this and applying your technique and saying, okay, I am ready. So I'm not gonna wait till January. I'm starting my new year's resolution right now. Um, and they are going to the gym for the first time perhaps, or the first time in a long time, gyms can be a little overwhelming. So what do you recommend for people who want to get started again or get back on the right track? And I think post COVID has, this is happening a lot post COVID. I think people were at gyms more than they are now. They've been working out at home and they want to get back into the gym. So now not only is the gym overwhelming, but there's this whole new atmosphere that, you know, kind of hangs over our, over our heads. Um, so, I think finding a gym that feels comfortable to you, if a gym is what you want to join. So a gym, a class, signing up with a personal trainer, when you walk into a space, it should feel comfortable to you and you should not have hangups that are gonna keep you from coming there. So I think the first thing is, is find a place that maybe find a recommendation from a friend. Um, I, at HealthFit, the, one of the best things about our facility is the front desk is so friendly and they will give you a tour and I think people always say, I don't need a tour, but I think a tour orients you so that when you walk into a facility, you're not like, oh, where's the locker room? I feel awkward, or I don't know where the chest press machine is, and that's what I know how to do, and I don't know how to start the treadmill. I think that those things all start to creep into our minds and keep us from being successful. Like when you know where you're going and you know what you're doing and you have a plan, you feel confident, and then you can just work out. So I think finding a comfortable place um, taking advantage of the resources that are available to you because most gyms, especially a place like HealthFit, um, is going to have a really educated staff, a welcoming staff, and you can find a trainer. You can go with a friend. I think all those things help us deal with you know, the overwhelmingness because I think that we all think in our heads, everybody here knows what they're doing and I don't. And you know, we're all so caught up in that. And so if you can feel comfortable and confident in your surroundings, I think that step is already going to set you up for success. So I think I know the answer to this, but what age group is appropriate for the gym? Or is it ever too late to get started? I know we have a lot of active seniors in this community, and then we have some seniors in our community who wish they were more active or even younger people. So what do you say to New Year's resolutions for the young and the old? I actually belong to a gym near my house and I also work out at HealthFit. And so I think all the gyms in this particular area have subsets of um, age. And I think that it's never too late to start. And I absolutely love being around the aging community in our gym. They are working so hard and I admire it so much. And I think what the aging population doesn't realize is that most young people are not going, oh, look at that old person. They're going, dang, that is so cool that they are here. And I hope I'm like that when I'm older. So it is never too late to start. I have, I'd say 50% of my clients are over the age of 70 and absolutely just my favorite people to be with. They work so hard. They want to do everything. They're so, I admire them so much. And other young people do too. So I think having a really diverse gym is very cool. And it's also a great learning experience because you can learn at all ages what people are doing, what they should or shouldn't be doing. And I just think it creates a great environment. Speaking of what people should or shouldn't be doing, <laughs> oftentimes when people have weight loss goals specifically, they focus heavily on cardio. Yes. Uh, you'll see people whose New Year's resolution was to lose 10 pounds and all they want to do is the treadmill. Mm -hmm. Why is strength training important? Strength training is incredibly important for an entire list of reasons that we don't have time for. <laughs> um, but in summary, it is incredibly effective. So if you are put onto a plan or if you have your own education in strength training or you can find a trainer or somebody, a friend, family member that's trusted, strength training can be incredibly efficient. And what I mean by that is that to reap the benefits of cardio, which 
there are many benefits to cardio, you really need to be in that 20, 30, 45 minutes, um, upwards of an hour. And you know the um, Heart Association has many guidelines of the times you need to meet. Strength training can be done in a very short period of time, and two times a week they've even shown benefits. So you're talking about 30 to 45 minutes, two times a week, strength training. You're building muscle, you are um, releasing all kinds of hormones that end up like helping wash out toxins out of our bodies when you're strength training. And for the aging population, you are keeping your joints stable and strong by having those strong muscles around them. You're preventing falls. And many of my clients share with me that when they started strength training, it transfers to home. They feel more confident. They wanna go out on walks. They wanna do things around the house. They feel strong and they feel um, that they can do anything. And it's all related to strength training, which I find really incredible. So I, strength training is definitely, needs to be a major component of your workouts. We've all heard the old adage that muscle weighs more than fat. Can you talk about the importance maybe with New Year's resolutions specifically, if they're health related, to focusing on the feeling instead mm -hmm. of the number on the scale? Yes. I think that um, my generation, the generation above me, was very attached to the scale. And I think um, we as humans are attached to this idea that a certain number means certain things, vanity-wise. I also think that many of us, as we age, are attached to a number at a time when we felt great about ourselves, and maybe as we've aged, that number doesn't look the same, so therefore we don't think that we should feel the same about how we look. So I think that the scale can be great if you are using it in a positive way just to keep yourself in check. But how we feel is actually the most important part about health. Because if you are exercising and you are eating well and you are hydrating, which is one of the most important things you can do, um, and you feel good, that is actually way more important than a scale. So for people that get hung up on a scale, I encourage them to ditch it and just see where their weight loss journey, their health journey, their exercise journey goes. A lot of people who set New Year's resolutions or short-term goals, even mid-year, if that's when they set a goal, um, they fall into the trap of short-term health fads. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion on health fads? Because I've been a trainer for so long, I've seen a lot of fads come and go. And um, with my answer, take everything with a grain of salt. I don't mean to say anything negative about research or innovation, because as I have been in this industry longer, there is a lot more money spent on health, wellness, exercise, strength training. And I think a lot of that has to do with um, sports, because they're realizing that all of these really high paid athletes, that if they pour um, money into keeping them healthy and strong, they're better athletes than they perform better. So there is a lot of research and a lot of innovation in my industry that I don't think should be dismissed. With that said, I, I see fads come and somebody gets a hold of a fad. I don't know if it's a marketing person or somebody famous and everybody gets wrapped up in it. And often it's not good for anyone. And then you start going on a diet that isn't good for you. It doesn't serve who you are as a person, but you want to say that you've been doing it because this person's done it. And you know, I have seen people go on diets that work, they lose 50 pounds. And literally three months later, they've gained back 75. That's the problem with fad diets. They can be in fad, anything fad. It's going to come back at you. Any diet works if you stick to it because you're changing something that you were doing so drastically. So what is your plan when you come off that diet? Because if it's a fad, it's a fad for a reason. If weight loss pills worked, if fads worked, they'd all still be around. If they truly worked, we'd still all be doing them. If they truly kept us healthy, we'd all still be doing them and they wouldn't be a fad. So I am very wary of fads. I am very wary of anything that's not moderate, that's not tried and true, founded by research. I'm very wary of anything that is not sustainable for your actual living life. And any fad, will probably get those pounds off of you, but you are not gonna keep them off if you don't have a plan in place when you're ready to come off of it. So what is the tried and true? What, <laughs> what can people start to evaluate if they are thinking about that New Year's resolution or that healthy change? What is tried and true if they're just getting started? 
So that's actually a very hard question to answer, um, but a good one. So I think tried and true is for that individual person, but I think that in my experience, the people that have been the most successful are people that are moderate. People that are not in the gym seven days a week, twice a week, that are not on a crazy diet all the time. My most successful clients, family members and friends that I have watched over the years are people that say, I want to eat well, but I'm going to eat pizza with my family on Friday night. Um, I'm gonna go to the gym five times this week. You know what, I didn't make it all five, but I'm gonna make it five next week. Or instead of going to the gym, I walked with a friend. I find that just being consistent in some way and being moderate is the tried and true for health. We are not, our bodies were not meant to live in extremes or our emotions. So having moderate behavior will lead to success. And you have to figure out what that is for you. You know, what works for you? What makes you feel good? You know, how are you gonna eat in a successful way consistently? Absolutely. What's the importance of routine when it comes to diet and exercise and, and trying to set a real routine instead of just, I'm gonna make it happen because I joined a gym or whatever? <laughs> I think a routine, first of all, if you are the kind of person that lives on a schedule, a routine carves out time. So I find that if my clients have an appointment, they keep it. And so it doesn't have to be an appointment with a personal trainer, which I always highly recommend, but it can be an appointment with yourself carved out in your calendar and so that other colleagues can't fill in a meeting here and there. So at 12 o'clock, you're eating lunch. At one o'clock, you're going to the gym, whatever it might be. And I think that routines also create consistency and consistency is where we are successful as humans with our health because consistent behavior leads to moderate behavior and that leads to healthy choices. So I think a routine definitely, it doesn't work for everybody. Sometimes my moms, they just are like, my baby slept for two hours today so I did yoga. Great, awesome. But at least it was on your schedule to do yoga that day. So I think a routine definitely helps people manage their lives and stay consistent. Absolutely. Well, many people are thinking about getting healthier now or preparing for New Year's resolutions. Um, this is also a different, a difficult time of year. Yes. To keep those resolutions. Yes. Um, if you're starting them, you've got New Year's, holiday parties, parties uh, family get togethers, mm -hmm. whatever it is. How does diet play into fitness and how do you advise your clients when it comes to these celebrations that happen this time of year? I think having that moderate type attitude is helpful. I think planning is also helpful. If you know you're going to a party, perhaps for lunch, you keep it on the lighter side. You know, you make a healthy choice, healthy for you. It could be a salad, it could be a sandwich, whatever that might be. Um, unfortunately, I think many people decide not to eat um, if they're going to a party. So they'll just skip food for the day. And then that creates binging. <laughs> it creates mindless eating when you walk in and then it's a spiral of bad decisions from there. Um, so I think planning is the most important part about managing ourselves through the holidays and not making extreme choices, you know, overeating and then the next day trying to compensate for that through exercise or um, unhealthy choices. So I think just knowing where you're going, making good choices ahead of time, staying hydrated. <laughs> Um, helps talking to your friends and family saying you know tonight help me like if you know you're struggling reach out to people say this is a hard time of year for me I'm addicted to sugar I don't want to binge on cookies tonight hey Allison will you just help me like check in with me and just make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing like use your resources mm -hmm. and um, just you know make a plan but also to forgive yourself if you do just overexert during the holidays it'll be okay HealthFit happens to be a medically integrated facility. What exactly does that mean? Um, HealthFit is a medically integrated facility. Means that our staffing, our programming, um, and the classes and courses that we offer are accredited by the Medical um, Fitness Association. And what that means is that there's a standard that we have to meet. And being associated also with Sarasota Memorial means that all of our employees have to reach the same credentials as 
um, you would, for example. So we all have to take health education. And also, being the type of facility we are, everyone on our staff has basic life-saving skills, and um, which is CPR for, that's the new name for CPR, and AED training. And everybody, all of the staff, has to meet um, certifications and higher education if they teach certain courses. So I am surrounded by colleagues that are incredibly educated. Um, I myself have a master's degree in exercise science, and I am a certified trainer in corrective exercise and have my master's training degree with the National Academy of Sports Medicine. And the reason I share that is because those names and those certifications are common amongst all my colleagues. So I'm surrounded by highly educated, very certified, competent colleagues. So when you come into HealthFit, you are going to get a superior staff and just their education and the things that they have to do to keep that education. Um, we have to constantly get recertified. And um, we have to meet standards all the time. So they're coming in and making sure we're meeting those standards. So you're coming into a safe place. You're coming into a place with excellent programming um, and great staff. So beyond just meeting the standards, not, not to toot our own horn or anything, but HealthFit actually was named Medically Integrated Facility of the year by MFA. So that's that's a really big deal. It's a very big deal. And it's actually incredibly, I don't want to use the word difficult, but we actually had to work very hard as a group. Um, leadership had to work very hard to get that honor. And we all met it. And we continue to have to meet it. They check in on us. They make sure we're doing all the things that we say we're going to do and continue to do them. So I definitely feel that I belong to a very proud team for that. But um, Yes, it is, it is a very big deal and I think we should all honor and people that want to join HealthFit should take that into consideration as a great place to come to work out and have, you know, to meet their health needs. Absolutely. For someone who might be planning those New Year's resolutions we've been talking about, why might a medically integrated facility like HealthFit be a benefit to them and, and help them succeed with those resolutions? So I think that if you have barriers to meeting your, meeting your resolutions, um, Maybe you've hurt your shoulder. Maybe you have not have had a knee replacement. Um, maybe you have Parkinson's and you're older. And I think that it's very easy to find a place for you that you're going to succeed in a place like HealthFit because of the programming and because of the quality of instruction there and instructors. So I think going, you know, looking at the classes and what's offered meeting your resolutions will be easier because those barriers are taken out. You know you're gonna be safe. And you also will have a plan put in place for you if you go to a class or if you hire a trainer. It's not gonna be like, just come on Tuesday and just work out. You're gonna have goals. You're gonna have exercises chosen for you that are specific to you. So I think meeting those resolutions um, becomes easier when you have something to, you know, to look at to execute and follow through. And why might um, hiring a personal trainer, a uh, certified personal trainer like yourself, help at least in the beginning, um, even if it's just learning what you should be doing. Right, or what you shouldn't be doing. Um, first of all, it's super fun to be with a trainer. <laughs> I, I love being a trainer, so I love being with my clients. And um, hopefully they love being with me too. But I think that hiring a trainer takes out the questions, because I think we spend a lot of time coming into the gym like, do I start with this machine? Do I start with that exercise? Am I doing this right? Do I do cardio first? Do I do legs first? What do I, you know, am I supposed to be doing legs? Am I gonna hurt my back? We get very wrapped up in that. So even if you don't have the um, financial um, ability to pay for a trainer long-term, I think going to a trainer and having them put a plan together for you takes out all of that. Now you have your sheet, you have your iPad, and you just go in and you know exactly what you're doing. And you have, you have that to sit down and execute. And then if you can stay with the trainer as you grow and as you change, your plan changes. And I think that that's just a recipe for success. Is there anything else you'd like to add when it comes to setting New Year's resolutions in a healthy way when it comes to a healthy goal? I think asking yourself why I'm setting this resolution. What does this resolution, what is my resolve? Why am I setting this goal for myself? answering that question. How am I going to do it? What's my week by week plan? Be, have a, ha 
a healthy attitude to it. I'm not gonna meet this plan these days. Why is that okay? Making those hard, having that hard conversation in yourself saying, you know what, I'm just, I'm not gonna succeed on the weekends. How am I gonna get around that? I really asking yourself, like deep dive, why is this goal important to me? Is it important to me? Is, is this somebody else's goal? Is this the media's goal? Is this my husband's goal? Is this my boss's goal? Whatever it is, this, your goals need to be important to you. And then having a plan and being ready for those hiccups. And that's a healthy way to set a resolution. Because it's also important, sometimes people fall off. I yes, know of course. last year, personally, I <laughs> fell off my New Year's resolution because I had one bad week and I said, oh, that's done. Yeah, forget it. And I'm not going to go back. Right. So I think, yeah, I think knowing you're going to mess up, mess up. I, you, knowing that there's going to be a spring break, knowing that there's going to be days where you just can't meet your little checklist. And what are you going to do about that? What's the backup plan, the healthy backup plan? And just knowing that you're human and that life happens and that it's going to be okay if you just are consistent and you just get back on that proverbial horse and just try again, I think is just the, the best road ahead. Great. Well, Blanche and Rowan, thank you so much for joining us today and answering all these questions. Thank you for having us. As always, we encourage everyone in our community to visit smh.com to get the latest from Sarasota Memorial. Have a great day.